Hello everyone, this is Coca McDonald. I'm an occupational therapist and the author to Reflex Integration Through Play book series. We have about uh, five books that are out and more to come. So make sure that you stay in our community, subscribe so you find out the next book that will be coming up soon. Today I'll be talking about this symmetrical tonic neck reflex the STNR if you have this book you know that um, it is laid out in a way that it's easier to use the idea behind these book series is really for therapists and parents to be able to use it with ease it's created that uh, parents can use this as a home program and therapists can use it as a treatment planning a method in a tool so I get a lot of response from therapists that they really use it on a daily basis so it's very exciting for me to hear and we're creating more for you and for those of you I know we have uh, multiple of them for the more reflex we have one for STNR for ATNR we have the spinal gallant and the TLR and uh, we'll be writing out the next one and we'll surprise we'll let you know we'll let you know soon and um, i know that the books are you know piling up each of the books have multiple multiple exercises and recommendations and what we've done is actually uh, compiling all that and hearing from our users they wanted to an app or video so we have compiled that as an app and inside our app we have videos that goes with it and the description so you don't have to memorize all this you can actually have it in your app with the exercises with the instruction and with the videos that you can really use with your client and also create a playlist and send it as a home program so the parent can also have access to it at home and be able to use it with their kids so it's been great if you're using it let us know in the comment below how you're using it and how you're finding it helpful today i will be just discussing a little bit on the SDNR. So the SDNR reflex is a reflex that is called it's all more of a transitional reflex. It's a reflex that when a baby is born is present at, at birth and kind of goes dormant and comes back later on. Um, it is the reflex that helps the child go on all fours and be able to crawl. And before that there are other reflexes um, like the TLR, the Moro, the, the hand grasp and other reflexes that are present and active and working on the child's development. But this this one is the one that helps the child to go on all fours. It divides the body in half. Kind of think of it as the upper body and lower body. When it says um, dividing it, it's more of like the the motor patterns of the upper body and lower body are opposite. And you see that in the way the reflex pattern occurs. So the sensory trigger for this reflex is the head going up and down. So when the head is going up, the upper body will extend and the lower body will flex. When the head goes down, the upper body will flex and the lower body will extend. So the combination of both these two and an integration is what's going to help the child to go on all fours and being able to crawl so this reflex is really important for that transition for coordination of the upper body and the lower body and for bilateral coordination for uh, visual perception as well for near and far for being able to track visually as well this is very important and uh, for both you know right and left side of the body to integrate and work together is very important as well because you the child have to be able to alternate that you know the opposite sides so that is going to be very important so this reflex is necessary and um, very useful and you will see it um, around about six months when you start the kid start going on all fours you see them holding an all four position and rocking back and forth this is the natural progression of the body integrating these movement patterns and learning so we definitely want to see that we want the kids on all fours 
and being able to rock back and forth you see the rhythmic movement and repetitive movement which is very very important and they might when they look up they might sit you see them when they look down they might fall over and they try it over and over again so it's very very important and if you see a child skipping this stage or if you see an improper crawling uh, sometimes we might think it's cute and we might not think it's necessary they, they see them scooting or doing a one side crawl but you know keep note because this will lead to another challenge later on it might not seem a big deal in the beginning but uh, nature has its own way of having certain patterns in there so whenever we skip it or or where there's improper way of learning know that this is the foundation being built and there's going to be another challenge later on so it's good to go back and work on that pattern and making sure that the child can have that pattern again so now let's say this reflex is still active in present and later on it's not the you know the baby or the the child at that age did not really integrate this movement pattern in the body and that myelination and that learning did not occur there are other areas you start to notice or uh, will contribute to other challenges um, this can be posture you might see a child not being able to hold on their position in the seating posture those are the things that are um, that will happen if you have the book you'll see some kind of visuals that we have here for you that you might be able to see and then 18 you'll see that the child is sitting either with upper body flex and uh, lower body straighten and because they cannot coordinate both of them or because the, the reflex is kicking in that pattern is still in the body this becomes really difficult for them so in the classroom as a therapist as you are observing in the classroom and you see different seating posture this is where um, your clinical skill and observation will come in you'll be able to see why is this the child sitting a certain way why does the child have to you know bend their knees in order to sit that's the sphinx position which is the second phase of the reflex pattern and the SDNR, it's a symmetrical tonic neck reflex where the lower body is flex and the upper body is um, straightened. So the child, in order to compensate, will have to sit on their heel because they cannot manage to have, you know, what we always ask, the 90-90 degree seating posture. They will not be able to do that in focus because in the classroom we're asking our kids to focus and that takes a lot of brain power and energy and then in addition to that asking them to hold their body go against these reflex pattern that that are not naturally integrated in the body would be really really difficult so that's why you see different posture different accommodation so as you're observing in the classroom as a therapist and you see these uh, children acting a certain way sometimes they might be seeing like they're not listening they're fidgety yes they're having difficulty in different areas but what we can do as a therapist is almost like we're investigating and seeing how the body is accommodating to make sure that they're attending to a task and see how they're observing how they hold their body and how they're interacting that'll be able to help you see what's going on so read through that and you have uh, several exercises you can do in order to help with this reflex always go back to the natural thing i always go back to we don't have to create so many different things go to play Play is the best way to work on anything with kids because if we incorporate play, we can really target different areas, even anything you can think of, you can bring play into it, okay? So one exercise that you can always do is even if an adult, and I've worked with adults and I've had them go back on the floor and crawl and see the, the crawling pattern, and it's okay to go back to the basic, go back to the crawling, and see how the client is able to crawl can they alternate are they even are they back straight all those kind of things you can see and I even check having them hold all fours and go uh, ask them to do head pendulum which is up and down with their head and see what's happening in the rest of their body you wanted to check their knees their hip and even their wrist whether or not they're bending or they can stay controlled and uh, controlled and balanced and they're um, on their hands and knees and see uh, what uh, their body is doing 
so if you want to learn more there's so many different uh, ways that you can address that each client is different so you can't assume that by doing one exercise you can figure out how to work with everyone that's not how it works because the more you work with clients you're gonna learn that each of them have their own specific needs and you definitely have to target their needs so if you want to learn more you're definitely welcome look at our links below and come in and see how we can support you and your growth as a parent we have resources for you you can get the app uh, so where you can get the exercises the definitions of all, all these reflexes and we have a hundred plus exercises that you can access there and we're going to continue to add more to that resource and let us know as you join in our community as well let us know what you need so we're going to continue to service you as well so thank you for joining me today and in our next video we'll talk about other reflexes